All right, part two, the sixth trumpet being announced in Revelation 9, verses 13 to 21. And let's go on here. Uh, we were talking here where we were talking about considering the natural disasters that happened. Uh, they occurred in the Roman Empire. And let's give pause to think about all the storms and earthquakes and other natural disasters going on in the most powerful nation on earth in these current times today where we are faced with those kinds. I says, what about this sixth judgment? It says, where the enemies of the Roman Empire started attacking them by picking away at them bit by bit and piece by piece. It says, now what about this most recent enemy of the most powerful nation that is on this earth today? You know, today that rises up and causes death and destruction in its wake. Uh, depleting all the resources that were at hand, uh, which are necessary to withstand against the enemies. All right, we today know what the very fate of the Roman Empire was facing, and we also know why it occurred. It says we can see the parables or the parallels that were going on right in front of our eyes. Says why we as a people repeat before it is too late. Let's re, uh, let's hope that uh, you can repent so we don't repeat this, uh, or history will repeat itself. All right. See yet another world power rise and fall, all because of all because of ungodliness. All right. And while we are Considering these things, we also need to give our attention to how to get this message to the righteous. Or, I mean, not the righteous, but the unrighteous. It says, if the message of hope comes out from us, meaning the Christians, then from... If it, I mean, if it doesn't come from the Christians, that's who we are, the righteous, to give, to give to the unrighteous, then where will it come from? It says, whence will it come from? And that means where will it come from? Now, let's kind of go over this. If you left the room and you had to use the bathroom or something, um, let's, let me read this to those people, uh, because this, uh, this stuff is a lot of stuff we cover tonight. In summary, and let's paraphrase this, then we'll go to God in prayer and we'll adjourn for the evening. Revelation 9, verses 13 to 21, uh, paints before us a wonderful vision and, of course, a very real picture that could really happen to us if we don't repent of our ways and don't come back to God. All right? And as it starts here, it says, The sixth angel blew on his trumpet, and from the four um, horns of the golden altar, which stands right before the throne of God, I heard a voice speak to the sixth angel, instructing for him to release a plague of horsemen which have been held back at the great river called the Euphrates. It says this plague, which had been uh, prepared long beforehand, has, now is ready to strike at the exact appointed time that God has chose and was literated so they will destroy about a third of all mankind in their very wake. I was also told that the number of the enemies of these horsemen and they were 200 million strong fighting warriors. Okay. Now, in my vision, this is where John says, I saw also the horses of all those who sat upon them, and their very riders were, were um, armored, and being armed with breastplates, breastplates of red like fire, and blue like sapphires, and yellow like sulfur. It says, the horses' heads, all the horses' heads, were powerful and had they looked as if they were like lions and from before them 
poured out fire, smoke, and sulfurous fumes. It says, uh, many mankind were killed in these various attacks. It says, the power and the fury of the plagues looked like it was coming from uh, their very mouths and their tails. Of course, and then I could see, it's John talking here, that their heads were like deadly serpents uh, from their tails, and they um, wounded people from behind them too. It says, but the rest of humanity who were not killed in these various attacks refused to stop and to even you know, think about it, so they continued worshiping their devils and their man-made false god-like idols that were made of gold, silver, and of brass, and stone, and of wood, all of which are without life, and they are unable to see or even hear or even walk upright. Moreover, they also even refuse to stop murdering and their practice of sorcery, you know, and of sexual immorality. That's something we need to think about because a lot of that is going on rampantly in our country today. And so that's why it's all the more fitting here that this looks a lot like what's going on in America and in a lot of countries around the world. Now, in closing thoughts, you know, this war, there are wars that happen in certain areas and territories, but there will be a worldwide destruction when God decides to end this world, but it's going to be with fire. And yet there'll be other various, many wars and destruction because of these various things that caused the fall of the Persian. The Patheon, as we read, and also the Roman Empire, they were all destroyed in similar fashions. We also, too, will be, too, if we don't turn from all these things that are wrong and evil and repent from them. And see, that's what the Bible tells us, that these small wars will happen, but there will also be a global conflict which is heading up before God, when God comes back, which will be a fire, and it will totally destroy everything. You know, everything that you see and know will be totally gone. Uh, if you're a Christian, you won't be here to witness that. But next week we'll be dealing with lesson number 22. That's not chapter. That's talking about the chapter 10 of Revelation. And this is the little book and the unimmutable uh, thunders. All right? And that comes from Revelation chapter 10. That's what we'll look at next week. Okay? Dear Lord, thank you for this wonderful day. Thank you for the time for us to come together in spite of the storms that are going on outside. And the spiritual storms as well as the ones that are physical for the heating of the day to cool it down a little bit. Which are a reprieve and a relief for the atmosphere and also for the electric bill too. Um, you know, hope that um, people will repent so they don't have to face your storms. Of the woes that are presented here in Revelation also could be faced and be cut off and be thrown into hell for an eternity. And that is very real. That's no joke or no fanciful tale. That's a real thing. You, you go painstakingly to tell us every little bit about what hell really would be like in Scripture and also bit by bit in every detail of it and every you know imagination, which is not a place I want to go, Lord, and not a place I would like to see anybody here go either. Thank you, Lord, for everything you do. In Jesus' your wonderful name, amen. Everybody go out and fight the devil. We'll take two with you if you feel you can't do it yourself. You should always take some people with you. Remember, I love you. I'll see you Sunday. And we'll still continue more on with Truth and Reason series. And we um, got a good sermon coming up. So please be in prayer for that. And also be in prayer for us. We still need the $1,300 that is needed to pay off the computer stuff here, the repairs that we had done. And for the storage NAS that died, we got the drives and everything. We've got to pay off the vendor. And uh, please subscribe. Please donate if you can. If you're an individual, you can donate or a church can donate. Um, our address is 7110 New Hunter Road, Apartment 423, Mechanicsville, Virginia, 23111. And our phone number for uh, to make credit card donation because we have the ability to, uh, well, to take credit cards. I was going to show you, but evidently I can't do that for some reason. Yes, I can. Um, you know, we just slide it through here, or we can do it over the phone. See? See, that's it right there. And uh, we can do credit cards, and we don't tell people to go in debt, but 
we tell them to use their debit cards, you know, if they want to make a donation. So when you uh, make a donation, you'll see, you know, my business door in a week is the Silvis' Media. Well, our church is also here at the business as well as where I live because we have a small church. It is separate from the business, but I filed as, you know, there's 503C church charters exemptions. Well, we can also file a church as a business, and that's the way I do it. So it's all perfectly legit and legal So uh, with the IRS. So I'm just letting you know you can do it that way. We have more freedom behind the pulpit than, say, a lot of these churches that are 503C run because uh, there's not much regulations as much on what we can say or talk about in the in the business situation as there is in a church situation. So anyway, uh, you know, you might want to rethink about, you know, refiling for that charter exemption because you get a lot of the same benefits that you do with 503C as you do with a corporation or a... Um, since, I mean, in the language of the bill of the 503C, you're treated as a corporation entity anyway, even though you really aren't. Your church, you're not supposed to be in the same category as a corporation. But that's what they have done. If you look at it and read it all, that's exactly what the 503C charter has become, something like a nonprofit or corporation entity. So you might want to really look at that. But anyway, I'll see you next week. I love you. This is Michael DeSilva, evangelist from New Hunter Church of Christ. See you later. Take care.